All right, what I'd like to do in this video is talk about three-point perspective, three-point perspective, and I'm going to talk about it um, in context of, um, in the context of explaining also what one and two-point perspective are. Um, all three of these, one, two, and three-point perspective, are slightly different variations on the same space-making game that artists came up with to show um, space and volume on a two-dimensional surface. And they all conform in slightly different ways to how we actually see the world. So we'll start with one point. And um, the rule of one point, um, the, the first rule of one point says that, uh, that when you're working in one point, one plane of the object has to be parallel to our picture plane. And what that means is that um, if we think about the rectangular solid being the mother form of perspective, one of those planes always has to stay parallel to our field of vision um, which means that one of those sides has to have two sets of parallel lines. So in other words, um, if I draw a box like, like this in one point perspective, this plane is parallel to our picture plane in that these lines are parallel, those lines are parallel to one another. So that means that that plane is parallel to our, um, uh, to our, uh, a line of sight. All right, so um, so that's that's one point, and one point con conforms pretty well to how we actually see the world until you move away from this situation where we're seeing things directly from one of its four principal points of view: front, side, side, back. Okay, so as soon as we get to a position like this, where we're seeing um, where we're seeing two sides of the object. So this is an object that's below my eye level. So there's a box in one point perspective where we see two sides instead of just the front. The problem with this, in terms of how we actually see the world, is once you see two sides like this, because of the rule of perspective, this plane still has to be parallel to our, to, um, our visual picture plane, right? So that these lines are still parallel, so that this appears as a horizontal on our page, just the way this did here. The problem is it's not a horizontal in real life. This line, as soon as we see two sides, this line is gonna start angling upward as we learned um, in those other perspective videos, right? So, so this, um, this is kind of a, <clears throat> it's false in terms of how we actually see the world. If you're consistent about how you use one point perspective, it'll look real to the viewer. So, but it's a simplification of how we see the world. And so there are limitations in terms of, um, you know, as artists who are interested in, in recording what we actually see, there are limitations to, to one point. So then with two point, we can take care of this problem. And two point, the rule is that no planes have to be parallel to, the, to our visual picture plane anymore, but, but there are a set of lines, those A lines stay, stay parallel. So in two point, this near corner line, for example, that's going to be parallel to this line over here. So this line is parallel to this line over here, stays parallel to this line over here. And then these, uh, you know, these B and C lines, as we saw before, those, those are lines that are going to converge, right? So our B lines and our C lines are gonna converge. So in one point perspective, you have one set of parallels, um, uh, one, or sorry, two sets of parallel lines. Those A lines and B lines are, are parallel to one another, right? So these A lines are parallel and the B lines are parallel. And then you just have one set of converging lines, those, those C lines are converging lines. So in two point, things change a little bit. You have one set of parallels, those A lines, but then you've got two sets now of converging lines. They converge at different vanishing points. So you still have the three, um, sort of line sets, but they've changed their, their character a little bit. All right, so, and what this does is this takes care of the visual problem that's created here. And this is, the reason why this doesn't conform to how we see the world, this box here, is that by, by showing two sides, we're saying this is closest to us, right? That corner is closest to us. So by the time we get back here, this side, this line over here should be smaller than this one because it's further away from us, right? So that's, and we get that because these lines are converging, right? 
But on this side over here, this line should be smaller than this one, right? Because it's also further away from us. If this is, that your corner is the corner that's closest to us, this one should also be smaller than this, but it's not because these lines have stayed parallel. So it's the same size as the near corner, right? So that doesn't really make sense. So in two point, we get around that by having the two sets of converging lines. Now, this line is smaller than this one because these lines are converging. And this line is smaller than this one because those are converging, right? All right, so two point is much closer to how we actually see the world. There's still one problem with this though, and, and that is that um, if we're looking down on this box, of this near corner, this is the point that's closest to us, right? Because it's below our eye level. So the top of the near corner is closer to us than the bottom of the near corner, right? That means that this line up here should be longer, should be a longer line than this one down here because it's closer to our eye level. This is getting foreshortened down here. But because these lines are parallel, this line's the same length as this one, right? Again, it doesn't, it's a, a subtlety, but it doesn't quite make total visual sense, right? So what three points says is that, okay, we're gonna introduce another vanishing point that's not at our eye level this time. It's either down below or up above, depending if you're looking down or up at something. And what that allows us to do then is it allows us to do this. So now we've moved from one point where we have two sets of parallels, one set of converging, to two point, which has one set of parallels, two sets of converging. And now in three point, what we have are three sets of converging lines. So our A lines now are converging. They're converging to some vanishing point down below our eye level. Right? So the B lines are converging and the C lines are converging off in this direction. So now, so three point is really closest to how we actually see the world. Normally artists just stick with two point because over a short distance, this kind of, um, that kind of foreshortening is not as easily viewable and it's a little bit more complex to, to sort of take into account. But if you really want to get down to it, this is truer to how we actually see the world than, than two point. So on, if we do, uh, if we're looking up at something, it's going to, it's going to look like this. So these lines are converging down now to our eye level since, this, uh, since I'm drawing something that's above our eye level. And these lines now, these A lines are converging up to some vanishing point that's way above our eye level. So the reason I wanted to get to three point is because in this, um, you know, the exercise that you're going to be doing, I've asked you to look sort of dramatically down or dramatically up. So artists usually use three point when they're trying to emphasize that idea of looking up or looking down because it really sort of heightens the impact of, um, of the drawing feeling like it's either being looked down upon or looked up at.